Mac. Something's happened to Robin. Yeah, you. No, I mean it. Something's wrong. Tell me. I went by your house to check on them, and the front door was open. Robin's car wasn't in the driveway. There was stuff all over the place. Emma's half-packed diaper bag was sitting there. But they weren't in the house. I went by the hospital. Lisa's not there. And she's not answering her cell phone. So what are you saying? You think Lisa kidnapped Robin and Emma? With everything she's done, yeah. I think she's kidnapped Robin and Emma. You know, it hasn't escaped me, Patrick, that Lisa somehow makes a convenient scapegoat for your failing as a husband. I mean, if she is some crazy stalker, that absolves you of cheating, doesn't it? You know, you're just a victim and Robin can blame Lisa, not you. Mac, Robin and Emma are missing. Maybe Robin took Emma to the mall or out for a walk or over to Maxie's or one of a thousand other explanations, Patrick. Maybe, Patrick, you're just a rotten husband who failed at your marriage and Robin's trying to avoid you. I get it, okay? Your opinion of me is less than nothing. I understand that. I can deal with that. But right now, my wife and child are missing and you need to help me find them. Emma in a wrecked car. Unless she was dazed by a blow to the head, thought you could help. She wouldn't leave Emma. I'm telling you, something else is wrong. Which brings us back to Lisa, who wouldn't have targeted Robin if you hadn't trashed your marriage to Look, sleep back. I get it. This is all my fault. I was selfish and I was stupid and I regret everything that happened. I'm not trying to deny it or justify it. If Robin never forgives me and she wants a divorce, then I'm gonna have to live with that. But what else do I need to say to get you to focus on what's happening right now? I'm going to jump to conclusions based on your need to make Lisa Niles wrong, all right? If Robin is wandering around days from Damn it, Matt, Robin is not wandering out. Robin is not wandering around. Lisa has her, and if we don't find her now, there's no telling what she'll do. Robin, can you hear me? Robin, how did you get here? Where am I? What? Okay, easy, easy. Just give yourself a second. What are you doing here? Get away from me. Okay, take it easy. I'm not trying to hurt you. Where did... Oh, God, where's Emma? What have you done with my daughter? Is Emma? I have no idea. You I just bitch. walked in and I found. What have you done with her? Okay, nothing. I haven't seen Emma since that night oh. when I took her for ice cream. You took her somewhere. You... What? What did you do with her? Okay, look, you're obviously having some kind of. Will you? Episode. Okay, I am just trying to help. No, you're not. You slept with my husband and. You threatened my daughter, and now you've taken me God knows where. Oh, God. Please tell me she's okay. What did you do with Emma? I imagine Emma is wherever you left her. Okay, I have no idea where that is, because I don't know what you were doing Shut or where up. you were or how you even got you here. You did something. Do you know how you got here? You took her. You did... You did something. Okay, one of my patients let me use his cabin. I, I wanted to get away for a couple days, so I took him up on it. Actually, you know him, Donald Mulvaney. Yeah, I know him, you so what? Drug. I came up here for a couple days. When I got here, I found the door wide open. I walked in, and you were lying on the couch unconscious. Do you have any idea how you got here? I was at the house. Matt came by. Maxie was she was supposed to watch Emma. Mm -hmm. Then I'm assuming that Emma's with Maxie. No. No, you you took her. You did something. She's Patrick's daughter too. I mean, even in your sick, twisted mind, how can you justify hurting a little girl? Okay. There is no cell reception, <clears throat> and Donald Mulvaney said the landline has been turned off, so we have two choices. I can either 
Leave you here and drive somewhere where my cell phone works and call for help. Leave me, you evil bitch. Could you stop calling me names? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. That was rude of me. I just, I don't know what to call the crazy person that dragged me into the middle of nowhere for what purpose again? Why, why, why would you do something like okay, this? I didn't do anything. All right, you got yourself here, Robin. And if you honestly don't remember, then you were even more unstable than I thought. I need to talk to you. Just give me a second. I can't. I just did that. I was on the phone with a board member. Robin's missing. Missing? I went by Mac's house to check on her. Emma's stuff was all over the place. Robin and Emma were both gone. What? The police found her car in a ditch, and Emma was still sitting in the back seat. Okay, okay. Well, uh, maybe she was in shock after no, no, the Mac accident. No, already tried that. He's convinced that she's walking around with a bump on her head. Well, that's the most logical explanation. It's Lisa. Lisa? Lisa did something to Robin. I'm convinced of it in my gut. I know it, but that's not enough for the cops. They haven't found Robin, and Lisa's not even a person of interest. Now, I need to change that. You need to help me. I'm convinced if I retrace Lisa's steps around the hospital, it's going to lead right to Robin, so I need to talk to anybody that she's worked with within the last day. What? There was an unfortunate accident. Maintenance worker found her. Lana Bucknell. Dead on the ninth floor landing, broken neck, apparently from a trip and fall. Lana worked with Lisa regularly. She was her orthopedic nurse. She winds up dead the day Robin goes missing. I'm telling you, that's not an accident. Okay, I understand that you would like to see me as some sort of, you know, sinister threat. Right, but I just happen to be the person with the bad luck of finding you here. Good, then why don't you leave? Trust me, I would love to. But, uh, <laughs> there is no way in hell I am going to risk you wandering off in the woods when the nearest road is miles from here. So we are going to wait until you are strong enough to move, and I'm going to help you get into the car, and we're going to leave together. I'm going to take you to the hospital and get you on some serious medication. I'm not the crazy person you are. I'm not crazy. I'm just unwise. Stupidly romantic. However you call someone who's still in love with a guy that she dated in college. I'm holding him apart from every guy who came after, just making them all seem less. I mean, I dated some really great guys, and they were hot and sexy and funny, and surgeons and brokers, even a race car driver, but none of them compared to Patrick. There was just something about him about us, how we were together. And it wasn't just the sex, even though the sex was, it was glorious. Incendiary, just like up against a wall in a classroom where someone could walk in at any second. Not that you would know what that's like. You don't strike me as someone who's terribly spontaneous. Well, I'm not gonna share sexual experiences with you. See, this is what I don't get. You're just so snippy. You're so cold. You're just sc so screamingly entitled that you expect Patrick to just, just, what? Bow down in gratitude because you've gifted him with your fabulous self? <sighs> You're boring, Robin. I mean, talking to someone who thinks that they're right about everything is just like it's a exercise in futility. I mean, that's Patrick's life. You making proclamations about everything from, from global warming to the best baby diapers. I mean, it's no wonder Patrick just wanted to come to Jake's and drink some beers and play darts and talk about the good old days. You know, my mistake is uh, thinking that it was something more. I mean, that's the irony is that I was... I was carrying a torch for Patrick, and I somehow convinced myself that he was carrying a torch for me when all he really wanted was a break from you. Look, he's not going to walk away from